So earlier this week, Sony unveiled their big new plan for PlayStation Plus, essentially revamping it, taking PS Now and PlayStation Plus, merging it together with three different tiers, uh, that being Essential, Extra, and Premium. Now, of course, there are a lot of reactions to this based on the pricing, what was offered, and is it really that comparable to Xbox Game Pass? Now, while a lot of opinions are flying around there, I kind of wanted to talk about something that may be going under the radar for a lot of people, and that could potentially be a strategy that Sony has going forward when it comes to day one releases. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure that like button helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave Plus channel, make sure you subscribe down below. So first of all, let's go over here to PlayStation Blog. This was the announcement that they released going over these different tiers. Expected, of course, them pushing out a press release and a blog post because it... It'd be kind of difficult to put all this information in a video that might be 60 seconds long as like a commercial. But we did have Essential, Extra, and Premium. The one that I think at this time, until we see at least the lineup of games, that will probably be the best value is indeed Extra. Premium has a lot to prove because it is relying heavily currently on streaming PS3 games as well as a library of PS1, PS2, and PSP games. While that is interesting to me because I like a lot of PS1, PS2, and PSP games, I understand not everyone does and it's kind of like, oh, do you like retro games or not? So in that case, we'll have to wait and see what these 340 additional games are for that back catalog of games from Sony's legacy library. However, Extra, as they say, adds a catalog of up to 400 of the most enjoyable PS4 and PS5 games. Now, they say it includes blockbuster hits from PlayStation Studios catalog and third-party partners, and they're all downloadable. There's no streaming for PlayStation Plus Extra, which for a lot of people is good news because it's like, wait, are we, are we able to download these? And I still see people who believe that PlayStation Now is only streaming, and that's not correct. You can actually download a, a large majority of the titles for the most part, I think it's just PS3 games that you have to stream. Uh, there's no download option. Also, the inclusion of PlayStation 5 games is new. Up until this point, it's just been PlayStation 4 games on PlayStation Now. We did see Jim Ryan talk in an interview about the approach to day one first party releases. Now, Sony isn't ready to jump in the deep end on that. Now, some games will be heading to this service about a year after release. I mean, Returnal is going to be like a year and a month or so heading into this service when it launches in June since when it released last year. But, like, you're not going to see Horizon Forbidden West show up here in June. At least that's the assumption right now based on Jim Ryan saying that if these games showed up close to launch even, it could affect how much money they're able to dump into these studios in order to produce these high quality games, right? Microsoft still has a lot to prove with Game Pass. Like, they are the ones who are able to do this because of how much money Microsoft has and overall, as like a corporation, and how much money they're willing to potentially lose for decades if they have to, to make this actually work overall. But the part I think people are missing right now is they're specifically talking about Sony first-party games. Something that Microsoft has actually been doing quite successfully with Game Pass since they're waiting for a lot of their studios that they've acquired to really spin up and start putting out big-time releases like Starfield, which, hey, is coming up at the end of this year. Still waiting on Redfall to hear more about that. But basically, to start the generation, it was a bit slower, and they really relied heavily on day one third-party releases. Think of, like, Outriders. MLB The Show, that, that was a great one to drop in there. And Sony has kind of been playing around with this themselves quietly, though. They dropped some games into PlayStation Plus Day 1, and they also dropped two games, kind of, into PlayStation Now around launch. Now, well, let me show you what I mean. First of all, PlayStation Plus did get Oddworld Soulstorm. That was just right away at launch. Hey, here's Oddworld. You can download it, claim it, and it's just part of your library as long as you're a PlayStation Plus subscriber. That was actually a pretty cool surprise for getting that game day one. I know it's not like a massive title or anything, but Oddworld Soulstorm is actually a pretty cool game. So just having that as a nice surprise when they announced the PlayStation Plus games for April last year, it's pretty cool. Destruction All-Stars. Not a very good game. I, I, it was a game that I played for, I don't know, a couple hours, and I was like, I, I think I've seen everything that I need to see here. But 
it was still a game that they initially marketed when they were first showing off the PlayStation as like a big first party release. I think they even had it priced at like 70 bucks at one point. Then they had to drop it down to like 20 and then they just they just threw it on PlayStation Plus in February after it got delayed from basically the release of the PS5 into uh, 2021. So that was technically a day one release from their first party that they threw in there. Now, they also had Grand Theft Auto 3. This was a month after the trilogy came out. So this is a strange one because Xbox got San Andreas and PlayStation Now ended up getting GTA 3 just a month later. I don't know if it was just cheaper for Sony. I do feel like they're playing around with the idea and trying to gather some data, but they don't want to spend too much money on it, at least not at this time when PlayStation Now and PlayStation Plus were separate. And PlayStation Now just did not have many signups. So in their mind, it's like, well, let's well, let's try to reel it in a bit here and get something like GTA 3 at a discount a month later. Now, they did very recently, actually, drop in Shadow Warrior 3, which is actually a pretty fun game. And the fact that it was thrown into PlayStation Now, yeah, that was pretty cool. They just go in there and download it and start playing it. It's the PS4 version, um, which... The Shadow Warrior 3 thing is kind of strange anyway because, like, the Xbox version says it has, like, some series enhancements, whereas, like, the PS5, I think it's through, like, backwards compatibility. Anyway, it's available, though, on PlayStation Now, and it was there on release. And this was pretty recent. It was at the end of February, so last month, this uh, this dropped in, and I downloaded it. Was playing it, and it was, again, pretty cool to have that right there day and date. And we're still seeing Microsoft get some of these, I'll say, smaller games. It's not like just indie titles going to Game Pass, like Sniper Elite 5. That's out in May, and that is going to be going into Game Pass immediately. And that's kind of the strategy I think Sony is going to take here when it comes to these PlayStation Plus Extra and even Premium Tier. Sure, Premium will be getting PS1, PS2, and PSP games dropped in over time, but Extra will have access to PS4 and PS5 games, and I kind of think, based on the reception here, which to Sony, the reception is just how many signups they get, if it's at least decent, I feel like they're going to start planning out third-party day one releases, because while they're not prepared necessarily to drop in like God of War Ragnarok on release, I wouldn't be shocked if they went out there and find their own Sniper Elite 5 or another Oddworld Soulstorm or Shadow Warrior 3, just kind of dropped it in there day one. Because from what we're seeing with Game Pass, they've been able to accrue, what, 25 million signups? And they've had, you know, some day one releases, like, uh, for, from their first party that were pretty big. Like, Forza Horizon 5, awesome game. I mean, that, that obviously had a lot of people checking it out as their engagement numbers were high. Halo Infinite is a weird case because that was free to play. So you don't even need, like, Xbox Live Gold to download it and play it. But the campaign, at least, I'm sure was interesting enough to people to get them to sign up to Game Pass to try it out. This is like Psychonauts 2, for example. And then, again, a lot of third-party games. And I kind of think that is the strategy we're going to see here from Sony, where they do drop in third-party games day one, just to see if it will increase and start to spike some of their subscriber counts. Because getting Shadow Warrior 3 for PlayStation Now was weird. Since they just had, a, I think, a couple million subscribers there. But now being merged in with PlayStation Plus and potentially seeing some people, up, upwards of 50 million, who would be on the essential program right now for PlayStation Plus, maybe move up to PlayStation Plus Extra. I mean, they could have an exponential growth there when it comes to PlayStation Now, considering that branding is just out the window and they're going all in with PlayStation Plus. So while the talk has mostly been around Sony and their big first-party exclusives going in to this service... I'm kind of looking out to see if Sony's going to make a big move with a third party right now. So we'll, we'll see as we get closer to release because we still need to find out the catalog of games for extra and premium. And who knows, maybe they're ready to go with a third party right now for a big release uh, a month or even two months after this service launches. So something to keep an eye on there. But let me know what you guys think about this one down below. Do you think this is a strategy that Sony's going to adopt going forward with the extra and premium tier? Thanks, guys, for watching, and I'll see you next time.